Tom here from Learn Systems, and we're going to talk about how to set up Nextcloud on TrueNAS scale. If you haven't heard of Nextcloud, it's probably one of the best document management systems. It's open source, so you own your documents because putting your stuff in some proprietary ecosystem, well, you're now subjected to that proprietary ecosystem. Nextcloud is fully open source, supports open document formats, supports online editing, collaboration. It's a great way to keep your cloud at home. But I will put a big but on this. Even though Nextcloud has gone through security audits, that does not mean there won't be some flaw found in the future. Now, I do believe the Nextcloud team is very on top of this and will maintain the package very well and have an update ready. But are you ready to do an update on this? Part of the planning, if you plan to publicly expose this, is going to be having a plan to keep it up to date. This is something I really hammer home with people who ask me help in assisting set up their next cloud for their business because they want to publicly expose it. I'm like, well, then you also, I highly suggest have some type of maintenance plan or contract. And it's not a good way to just avoid costs if you're a small business because it can cost you dearly if a flaw is in this system, you're not aware of the flaw, you don't update it in time and your data becomes vulnerable. My suggestion is to put this behind a VPN whether it's a VPN on your firewall, such as if you're using PFSense and OpenVPN or something like TailScale. TailScale is outstanding. I really like it. It's one of the tools that I've really used a lot more lately because I wanted to really put it to the test on a lot of scenarios. I'm really impressed with how well it works and does not have to expose any ports on your system to keep all of your network private. And of course, I've got the video head scale. If you go, but I don't want to use TailScale's public controller. Well, there's head scale for you. I've got videos linked down below for that. Now, this is specifically setting up Nextcloud on TrueNAS scale. If you're interested in how to set up Nextcloud independently on your own Linux server, Jay from Learn Linux TV has an entire write-up on that for doing it on a Linux server, but we're going to be a little bit more narrow in focus to just covering how to set up on TrueNAS scale. Things I'm not covering in this video because it's just out of scope is going to be using reverse proxy for those of you that would like to publicly expose this. But as I noted before, be careful with what you do and make sure if you decide you're going to publicly expose this that you have a plan. Just want to read it one more time before we jump into the tutorial. All right, let's get started. Now we're doing this on TrueNAS scale 22.12.3.2. First step is creating data sets to store the configuration and the data for Nextcloud. I already have this data set called app configs. I like to nest all of my application config data underneath one data set to keep things less confusing and more organized. That is up to you. It is an optional step, but we're going to create this Nextcloud database data set. This is where the database will be stored, which means we can leave the share type generic. We're not actually going to be sharing it. The standard Unix permission types are going to be fine. Go ahead and hit save. It'll automatically add the extra permissions that are needed when the application gets set up. Then we're going to go back to our root and add a, another data set. And this is where we're going to store the Nextcloud data itself. So this is Nextcloud data, and this does need some special permissions. So first we're going to set it to apps, hit save. Now we're going to go ahead and click on next cloud data, go down here to the permissions, hit edit, and we want to apply owner, apply group, and now we can type www, it'll autocomplete for data, data, and you notice here now it says owner will be and group will be, and I'll go ahead and apply these recursively, hit confirm, even though there's nothing in there, it's just always a step I take just in case there is some data in there we need to update, and this will save the ACLs and set the permissions so WW data group and owner are there. This is the permissions needed by Nextcloud. From there, we're going to go to apps. And you see I've already installed the Collabra application. There's really nothing you have to do this one. So I already put this installed. If you look at this parameters outside of changing the password, because the default one is just change me, I left everything here at default. So that's the first app you want to make sure is installed, but there's nothing to change except for the password. So it's not change me. That can be left at default. Now we want to go to the available applications again, and we want to go to Nextcloud, and we'll click Install. And this is the official from IX Systems, so Nextcloud Certificate Configuration. We're going to go ahead and use the default pre-NAS certificate. Default password is Change Me. Uh, let's make it much more secure by making it Change Me 123. We're going to go ahead and say yes to installing the extra FFmpeg and SMB client. And next, we want to set the next cloud storage. So we want to enable host path for next cloud data volume storage. And this is where we do the next cloud data portion. Then we're going to scroll down here and we want to enable host path for Postgres data volume. We're going to head and go here, go here, and we go to our app config. And this is where I want to store the Postgres database that 
Nextcloud uses. If you wanted to also enable, you could have created one more for extra backups of it. But because I'm going to be backing up the database, I'm not as worried about that. That's optional. Might be a good idea to do it, but for this demo, we're going to skip it. Enable cron jobs. Definitely going to do that. And after that, we just hit save and go all the way down here to the bottom. And we'll let it go through the process of spinning this up. Now, one thing I will warn you, it's about to say that it's ready, but then it'll go back to deploying. That is normal behavior. And depending on the processor speed, it may take it a while to get fully deployed the first time you set it up because it has to build out the databases. This is something where people may think they're stuck, but it may take, and like right now it says up to date, but if we go to the web portal, we're going to get this error. I just wanted to point that out that if you're impatient and we've we go off the page and refresh it again, it'll go back to deploying one of two. This is the whole setup process. This may take up to, depending on the speed of your processor, five minutes to do. In this particular system, which happens to be a Ryzen 3 2200, it takes about two minutes to get set up. But just of note, depending on how busy your machine is, this might take a few minutes and just be patient. All right, I waited about two and a half minutes and now the web portal is available so we can log in admin and the change me one, two, three, which probably not a great password, but hey, it works, but that's just what we set up for the demo here. All right, now that I put the password in properly, we are in. There's the next step though, is setting up the Collabra, so the Collabra of documents. For that, we're gonna go here and we're gonna go to the apps, search, and we're gonna look for Nextcloud Office, which is right here, and we want to download and enable. Now that we have the Nextcloud Office app set up, we want to go here to the administrative settings, scroll down to Nextcloud Office, and we want to use our own server. This is to get the document and Collabora online server working. And you can go to the web portal or you can just go here to click edit. And the goal is to put in the IP address of the server, which is these 192 1683.8 happens to be my server IP and the port number. And we have this set with a certificate to the FreeNAS default cert. So that means we're going to use the certificate with it. And we choose that by doing HTTPS 192.168.3.8 colon 9980. And we want to disable certificate verification. And it says Collabra server is online. Let's click save, but we know that works. Now let's go ahead and play with the document in here. So if we go back over to our files, and we'll just make sure this is all working so we can get into one of the collaborative documents. And we'll actually upload something. So I upload a document, TrueNAS Scale versus Synology. This is what produced one of my other videos. We'll go ahead and open this, make sure we can open up the collaborative documents. And here we are, it's working. Now there's obviously a lot more you can do with Nextcloud. They have great documentation. I just wanted to cover the basics of getting it set up, creating those data sets. The next steps you would have to do after this is going to be making sure you're backing up those data sets via replication, via copying all that data somewhere, maybe through uh, one of the backups to a cloud provider. There's a lot of different ways you can handle that, but importantly is getting it set up first and then backing it up and making sure you understand and have a plan. One of the other things to note is if you have to reinstall Nextcloud, that you can just point it back at those same data directories and all of your data was there. There was some bugs in the early days. If you had watched my early videos on this when TrueNAS Scale was first released more or less in beta, coming all the way here to July of 2023, it's a much better, much more stable integration. And I've deleted Nextcloud and popped it right back to those same data sets that I had pointed at and it restores perfectly fine. I made sure I tested this numerous ways, numerous times to understand that it works well. And if you had an incident, you'd be able to have all of your data. This was sometimes, like I said, a little bit buggy in the early days. So if you would experience that, try it out here in July or whenever you're watching this video, um, that it's moved and become a lot better of a product. Nonetheless, leave all of your questions and comments and thoughts down below. Love hearing from all of you. If you'd like to hire us for a project related to TrueNAS consulting and storage consulting in general, reach out to us over at lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.